Praise God. Ah, go ahead, lift your hands. I have to get another drink. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. And thank you. Yes. You said, he who thirsts and hunger shall be filled, and that you would grant us access to the tree of life in all rivers of living water. So we've come to drink and be merry in the spirit, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okie dokie. God's got a plan. And we're in it. If you choose to be. Glory, glory. John 14. Oh, boy. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. It's getting deep. We're getting saturated even as we're st sitting here standing wherever we are. I'm telling you, saturation is happening. Glorious. Whew. In verse 6, John 14, 6, Jesus said to them, I am the what? Way. The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through me. Hmm. Jesus was explaining the process to perfection. <laughs> I'm telling you, as we were worshiping, uh, an opening opened up like, like, uh, what do you call that shape? Oval? Oval shape. And all around it, was the world, but it was waving. It, wa it, c it couldn't handle. It was like the spirit realm was pushing open the natural realm. I couldn't see what was on the other side, but I just I saw it. It was so close to us. And, and I kept saying, how do we get in? And it was so close. And it was like I saw a button on the bottom, on this side. And I'm thinking, what, do we got to step on this button? He said, <laughs> to open up this realm? And he said, no, the button is a process that is established so that this realm opens. And when I looked at the button, it said, Two words, die and self. <laughs> and that opened. In other words, deny yourself, and that will open. And it was so close that I, we, I kind of just dove in. And I wanted to. But anyways. In other words, die to yourself. Deny yourself is the button that opens that. Whew. I thought, wow. When he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that's the, everything is associated with a process. Jesus went through a process to get to the cross so that he could fulfill the process for perfection. He became perfected so that we could be sanctified. If he wasn't perfected, we wouldn't have been sanctified. So anyone that's coming under him becomes sanctified. And there's a process of sanctification. Everything is a process, no matter what it is. 1 Peter chapter 5. It's called the perfect way. That's what Jesus is. He said, I have a perfect way for you. It's a process to perfection. In 
First Peter chapter five and verse uh, five. First Peter five, verse five. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. So submission is a vital part of process. Submit to God, resist the devil. Amen. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another, be clothed with humility. In other words, respect one another. For God resists the proud. Proud person wants to be respected, but doesn't so respect. But God gives grace to the humble. It takes humility to that arena. It takes the denying of self. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, he's going to bless your socks off. And if you don't have any, he'll bless some socks on you. He says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. Quit trying to figure it all out. There's a time to battle and there's a time to exchange. But here is the process. Be sober and vigilant. In other words, be consistent and alert. Because the adversary, your devil, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He says, resist him. Resist him, resist him, resist him. Steadfast in your faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so you're not the only one going through it. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have gone through the process, after you have what? Suffered. 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 Suffering has to do with denying yourself. Does everybody get it? Suffering has to do with denying yourself. Because you want to fight for yourself. Suffering says, no, I am not going to fight for myself. Jesus suffered to the cross. He did not fight for his life. In fact, suffering is how the will of God gets done. <laughs> After you have suffered a while, what's going to happen is you're going to get perfected, you're going to get established, you're going to get strengthened, and you're going to get settled so you're not moved anymore. That's called the process of perfection. He wants us to get into a place we're not moved. Well, we don't react, we respond. Where we don't hate, we love. Where we don't hold bitterness or unforgiveness, but we forgive. So that we are quick to respond, no matter what's going on. I forgive and bless. I forgive and bless. Man, I know what's, I forgive and bless. That's it. I'm not going in. So we don't get sucked in the ring. Because if you get sucked in the ring, you lose the battle. This is the process to perfection or part of the process to perfection. And 2 Corinthians 12. Verse 7, would you read it with me? And Paul was saying, he says, listen, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Now, Paul, man, Paul was in the spirit. But I want you to understand something that Paul being in the spirit, he was getting a lot of revelation he prayed in tongues a lot where the revelation came from after he got baptized. See, once Paul was baptized in the Holy Spirit, religion was gone. Everything changed when he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. He began to pray in the Spirit, and revelation came by praying in the Spirit. He got revelation of the gifts of the Spirit. He was able to explain the Trinity's function in ministry and gifts. 
All of these things were coming to him by praying in the Spirit. But in this, he really believed that a thorn was put in his flesh and it was given by Satan. And verse 8, and he said, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength. Everyone say his strength. His strength. Is made perfect in our weakness. Does everybody get it? His strength is made perfect in our weakness. How can that be? It's on the button. The nice self. It's always on the button. So you got to fight to hit that button, man. In fact, I really believe that it was, I'm not saying it didn't have the messenger, uh, it was a messenger of Satan who buffeted me, him, he said, but I really believe it was his own flesh realizing that it was wicked because it was associated with the old man which was the offspring. Our old man is the offspring of Satan. And realizing that he wanted to go deeper, there was always a hindrance. It's called his old man or his flesh. So he blamed it on Satan all the time, which was associated with that. Therefore, he says, most gladly, I'd rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproach and needs Man, I don't know too many people take pleasure in needs unless they reach that button. In persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am what? Strong. <laughs> Hallelujah. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Again, when we are weak, when we're relying on our strength, we're actually weak. See, until we rely on everything in the spirit realm and in the Holy Spirit, you know, when, well, every time, look at, many times you think you're strong in something, what happens is you begin to lose focus of it. So the enemy will promote strength in one area so that He'll even allow a certain area to be strengthened in you so that you begin to just ignore it. Well, I'm strong in that part. <laughs> and he waits for you to ignore it. And then he attacks you in it. And where you think that you were strong, you were actually weak. Because everything is associated is being, what does the word say? Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Everything revolves around the arena of denying ourselves. Everything. Everything. All of our strengths, all of our talents, all of our intellect, all of our experiences. Everything. Because there's a point in time where none of that is going to assist me and you. Only the presence of God. Only the word of God. Because so many times we begin to rely on certain things that we've experienced. When what's happening at that point in time is close to what we're experiencing, but it isn't the same. And something else will change. How many of y'all know that the enemy loves to blindside you? That's why the word says be ready in season and out. He loves to blindside us. Man, I didn't see that coming. He did. The Holy Spirit did. And Romans 6. So. For me and you, there is a process to perfection. It's called weakness, strength, and perfection. We, our weaknesses, which is what we call sufferings, things that we're weak in, we usually suffer. Romans 6. Oh, 
Holy Spirit. Let this message come in this realm with understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans 6, 17. Let's speak it. But, thank be, but God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered from. What doctrine? The word of God. So the word of God, he's saying, is what brings deliverance to me and you also. Because you obeyed it from the heart, not from the mind. There's a difference. Obeying it from the heart not from the mind. See, when you obey it from the heart, it's a part of your life. When you obey it from the mind, it's temporary. You have to always grasp for it. When you obey it from the heart, it's a part of your life. It's a part of you now. You, you are becoming the living word. Verse 18, and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your what? Flesh. Flesh. For just as you, were, you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Again, denying yourself is associated with coming to the end of yourself. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have put your, you have your fruit to holiness and the end, what? Everlasting life. Obeying the doctrine is a process, part of the process of being set free. You know, again, we talked about the difference between demon management and being free. Remember, we live in this matrix. A matrix has a system. And in the system, they want to free everyone with a pill, with medication. So they want to bring stuff to people from the system. What it does is it keeps them bound to the system. And that's how the matrix works. To be caught and stay in the matrix. Does everybody understand this? Everything to them is associated with what's created in the matrix to free a person in the matrix, but it's called false freedom. It's only management. Romans 8. with man-made material. Medication. You have a pill to sleep, a pill to wake up, a pill to go to work with, and a pill to come home with. A pill to whatever, and a pill to do whatever, you know. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> We won't go there. <laughs> Take a pill. Boom. You know. <laughs> Told you I was going to try and bring this to the physical realm. <laughs> you all right, Fifth? Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, lift your hands and get a drink, will you? Woo! Jeez. <laughs> Romans 8, 26. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? <laughs> oh, God help me if everybody's there. Anyway. Verse 26. Let's speak it. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our what? Helps our what? weaknesses for we don't know how what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which not can, which cannot be uttered now he who searches the hearts 
knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Again, the Spirit helps our weaknesses. What is he trying to do? He's trying to expose our weaknesses so that we deny ourselves so that we can step in the arena of Christ. Always, remember, deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow. That is the way, the truth, and the life. That is the process of perfection. Everything that you and I are going through is to enter that process of perfection. Look at, well, uh, Sunday, was it? What's today? Tuesday. Yeah. Sunday. Sunday, didn't we get anointed for endurance? Amen. Well, I, listen, I didn't know the message was coming until about two hours ago. What did he say? He says, okay, we're going to do from the process of perfection, but it's going to be from weakness to perfection, but it's weakness, strength, and perfection. Amen? He said, this is the perfect way. Isn't there three wills of, wills of God? Good, acceptable, and what? Perfect. That means when a person's only doing a good or acceptable will, they're not doing the perfect way. Does everybody get it? Or they're not consistent in it. Hallelujah. Psalm 18. So who is going to help you in your weaknesses? The Holy Spirit. That's why whatever you're doing, you know, you pray in the Holy Ghost then. Welcome the Holy Spirit in everything. Because when we are weak, when we actually, what it is, is when you recognize that you're weak. Amen. Amen. Because you may be weak in an area you ain't recognizing. So in this, when he says, when I am weak, then I'm strong, it's because I'm recognizing the area that I'm weak in, and I'm willing to exchange it or deny myself in that arena so that I can receive the strength of the Lord. And that's going to help me in the process to perfection. Because the more you do it, the more, remember, practice brings, makes what? Perfect. So the more you do it, the more it becomes a part of you. You don't even think about doing it anymore. You just do it. Because you're in the process of perfection. And there may be areas that you begin to perfect in your life and members in your life and other areas you're still perfecting until we become one. Psalm 18, is everybody there? In verse 30. Uh, verse uh, 30, okay. For as for God, his way is what? Perfect. Say what? Perfect. For the word of the Lord is what? Proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except for the Lord? And who is a rock except for our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way what? Perfect. Perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make what? War. War. So that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. In other words, he's letting you know that this process to perfection is going to take fight. It's going to take a battle. Nothing is gained without a battle. Psalm 138. Psalm 138. You know, Paul was always saying in this process of perfection, he's, he, 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 would, he would come to a point many times, he'd say, you know what? This place here, the part, this part, I haven't perfected yet, but I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on to perfection. In other words, we're perfected in him. We can't do it in our own strength. In Psalm 138, verse uh, 7. Let's speak it. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. Man, if we could just hold on to that scripture all day long and for the rest of your life, you'd be in good shape. Amen? Look at this. Though I walk in the midst of trouble... 
Hallelujah. There's trouble all around us. You will revive me. You will quicken me. You will keep me alert. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. And your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which what? Concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. So he's going to perfect everything that concerns you if you're willing to cooperate with the process to perfection. Hebrews 2. Hebrew 2. Verse 10. Is everybody there? What does it say? But you have carefully followed the, my doctrine, manner of life, Hallelujah. <laughs> I need to follow his doctrine, I guess. <laughs> Glory to God. It sounded good, though. I really like that. I wish you'd go back to that. <laughs> Hebrews 2, verse 10. Can we try this again? For it was fitting for him for whom all things and by whom all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through what? Suffering. Through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them what? Brethren, saying, I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly. I will sing praise to you. Again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here I am. H here am I and the children whom God has given me. Perfect through what? Suffering, trials, tribulations. But you don't know what I'm going through. I don't want to know. <laughs> Just go through it. <laughs> Hello, does everybody get it? What do I do with this? Go through it. <laughs> Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6. In verse 1. Is everybody there? Didn't have far to go. Let's speak it, please. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance. In other words, we don't need should have to go over repentance all the time. That should be automatic. That should be perfected already. Amen? That should be perfected already. Whatever you do, you know ain't right. Repent. Laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and from of faith toward God, of doctrines of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and the eternal judgment. In other words, man, these all should be perfected. Now let's move on. You should be baptized in the Holy Spirit. All of these things should be accomplished by now. They should be perfected. And this will we do if God per permits for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him on an open shame. Now again, this means that it doesn't mean that they can't come back. In other words, there's an area where once that spirit takes them over, no matter what you say to a person, ain't going to help. They're going to have to hit the, real, the wall of reality to say, oh, time to wake up, man. I've been uh, on the wrong road and things ain't right. Amen? But it is time to move on to perfection. That is a 
process to perfection. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Weaknesses to perfection. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Do not be unevenly yoked together with what? Unbelievers. Unbelievers. Why? Because this is the process to perfection. Get away from the idiots. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with what? Darkness. And what accord is Christ with what? Belial. In other words, he's saying, get away from the darkness. An unbeliever is a walk in darkness. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement is the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God. And they shall be my people if they come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch. Don't touch and don't touch. Or agree what, with what is unclean. And I will receive you if you don't do that. And I'll be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us what? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the what? Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Why? Because there is holiness in the fear of God. When the fear of God is perfected in you, its fruit is holiness. In other words, right standing with God. It will produce righteousness. See, many people, that's what the word tells us, that there are those who don't carry the fear of the Lord. They do whatever they feel like, do whatever they think, say whatever. Have no understanding. Their conscience is seared in many areas. But the fear of the Lord it says it's the beginning of wisdom. He said, in the beginning of wisdom is to depart from evil or to expose it. But the fear of the Lord is a part, it's a part of your core as a believer. It should be like the CPU in you. The fear of the Lord. Does everybody understand? And who is always producing the fear of the Lord and bringing recognition to it and reminding me and you of it is the Holy Spirit. Fear God and depart from evil. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 12. Hallelujah. Uh, let's start at uh, 22. Hebrews 12, 22. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly of and church of the firstborn who are regenerated in what? Or registered. <laughs> Glory to God, who are registered in heaven. <laughs> to God, the judge of all. Now, are you ready for this part? To the spirits of just men made what? Perfect. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of the things that are made. The things which are, cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Galatians 3. Hallelujah. 
We are the regenerated, registered citizens of the eternal realm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, please. All foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you such an idiot? <laughs> Having begun in the Spirit, you are now being perfected by the flesh. You're being perfected by the what? Flesh. See, many people fall into that arena. And when you begin to rely on your own strength and ignore your areas of weaknesses and begin to try and strengthen your weaknesses in the flesh instead of turning it over to the Lord, what happens then is you begin to rely on the flesh more than the spirit. You begin to rely on your talents and abilities more than the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In fact, many times, you will shut him up and push him away. No, I got this. Hello? I got this. Yeah, I don't need your help here, Lord. I'm okay. Believe me, the moment he steps away, Oh, where are you? Oh, help. I can't believe I did this again. Hallelujah. <laughs> are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for what? Righteousness. Therefore, now, therefore, know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. Are we sons and daughters of Abraham? Yes. And all the promises and the covenant are passed on to me and you. Amen. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 and verse 1. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin, not agree, not touch. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is a propi propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar. In other words, he's saying, and does not keep my word. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his what? Word. You see, he, he, he shows us. He's telling us. These are what I represent and mean by my commandments, my word. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is what? Perfected. In him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also walk just like he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Uh, again, the new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in, in you, because the darkness is passing away and the truth. The light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, James 1. <laughs> James 1, 21. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of what? Wickedness. 
and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is a idiot. He is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is or was. But he who looks in the he who looks in the in the what? Perfect. perfect. Everyone say perfect. perfect. Law of what? Perfect. Liberty or the perfect law of freedom. In other words, that's the process to perfection. What's because see in the arena of perfection, there's freedom. There's freedom. No torment. Free. Who gives a hoot? Just free. Hallelujah. Where are we? <laughs> for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Verse 25. But he who looks into the perfect law of the liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful, forgetful, I said forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. And what the enemy wants to do is kind of cause you to forget. He loves to cause you to forget, actually. I have to pray against that every day. Don't let me forget. <laughs> Please don't let me forget. If any among you thinks he's a religious idiot, I mean, uh, a religious person, and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep, I said, to keep oneself unspotted from the, from the world. Unspotted from the world. Praise God. Hmm. Colossians chapter 1. And if you see on my notes, you'd be saying the same thing. I must have been drunk. Colossians chapter 1. Anybody there? Praise God. Verse 24. <laughs> Help me. Would you speak it with me, please? <laughs> I now rejoice in my sufferings. Hallelujah! I'm rejoicing in my sufferings for you. Oh, and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the aff afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from the ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man, what? Perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. James chapter 1. Is everybody okay? Amen. Are you snapping? James 1. Verse 2. James 1 verse 2. I think we've all heard this, but this might bring revelation. The process to perfection. Weaknesses to perfection. The perfect way. Is everybody there? 
Verse 2, let's speak it. My brethren, count it all joy when, I'm telling you, when you fall into various trials, not if. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, which we call endurance. But let patience have its perfect work. Perfect work. Why? Because it's the process of, to perfection. Let it have its perfect work that you may be what? Perfect, perfect and complete and lacking nothing. There is a place that you know that you know that you know that everything's going to turn to the good. That you know God is going to make a way. That you know. You just know it. Because you're in the process of perfection. There are areas that you've seen already. You know. That have been perfected. Again, if you maintain this arena of practicing it. Because what is practice becomes what? Perfect. And your life begins to maintain this process of to perfection. You lack nothing. You know that it's coming one way or another. You don't have to fight physically, you fight spiritually, knowing that it's coming. It's going to happen. Well, things just aren't going right at work. It's going to change. Things aren't going this way. or It's going to change. The whole thing is, is you just got to stay out of the stinking way. Because it ain't going to change if you're in the way. Remember that button. Step on the button. Pew. You gotta, I don't care if you have to crawl through it and slap it. You got to deny yourself. Always. Okay. Ephesians 4. We're closing here. Ephesians chapter 4. Are you getting this? Amen. Good. Hallelujah. Man, I could run home right now. <laughs> I said I could. I didn't say I want to. Sheesh. Verse 11. 411. <clears throat> I am home. <laughs> and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. For what? The equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a to a, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue, the fullness of Christ. See, that perfect man is going to fall into the arena of the fullness of Christ. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share. That's called cooperation. Causes growth of the body for edifying itself in love. This I say, therefore, in testifying, O Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their minds, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God and true righteousness and what? Holiness, the process to perfection. You're in it. I hope. you either in it or you're out of it. Amen? But you wouldn't be here if you weren't in it. Amen. You would be out there. Amen? Amen. So I'm glad you're here. 
Praise God. Everyone lift your hands to heaven. Woohoo! Father, we just want to say thank you for the process to perfection. We thank you that when we are weak, we are strong because it's not us, it's you. We thank you for setting a place that we can constantly deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow. Not look back, but look forward. Live from the future, not from the past. As your children of the Most High, the King of kings and Lord of lords, that we are blessed at every spiritual blessing, seated in heavenly places and joint heirs of Christ and the righteousness of God. And let your name be glorified and magnified wherever we go in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen.